Hello and welcome, this is Corbin with the new Linux Experiences on Deck Edition video. This time we are going to have a look at the game Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is published and developed by Double Damage Games and it was released in 2019 as an Epic Game Store exclusive. But about a year later, in September 2020, it was also released on console, including Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, and it came also to Steam PC. It is the prequel to their game Rebel Galaxy, which is also a space game. But this game is focused on space shooting dogfights. And the theme description is pretty nice. Out of cash, out of luck, out of the fringe. Juno Markev has a killer to tail, adept to pay, and more trouble headed her way. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw takes place in a greasy blue collar world of outlaws, truckers, cops, and thieves. It is marked as unsupported on the Steam Deck, and that is actually really true this time, because the first time you try to start it, it will just close immediate without any further notice. Um, Proton 7.0-3 has been selected by Valve Testing, and we can keep that for an initial start. So I will start this. It will show a launcher. The launcher will show up, but as soon as we try to hit the play button or the start button, it will close. We will also have a look a little bit at the performance because we need to optimize the performance a little bit. But that is just one tick you have to set or to remove only on the first start. And then you can start the game without the launcher and that setting will be saved. This is the launcher. Um, there is no interaction possible with the normal controls so we have to press and hold the steam button and then we do get the mouse probably also this launcher is a reason why it's marked as unsupported as the launcher is not operable with the normal steam deck controls but as soon as we hit start here the game will just close let's fix this one of the easiest way to get behind the problem is to try it on the desktop and then transport your findings over to the steam deck and people have been finding out already that just uh, DLL is missing, which you can install with Proton Tricks. And we are going to do that real quick. So we have to switch over to the desktop. And here on the desktop, um, if you haven't installed it already, you open the Discover Software Center. And in the search bar, you enter Proton Tricks. And I have installed this already. Otherwise, you click on install here. Then you go to the menu and under utilities, you find here Proton Tricks. We have installed the game, so it is uh, here in the list. We have to select it, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. We click OK. We will get a warning about 64-bit prefix, but we can ignore that. So we ignore this by hitting just OK. Here we, it's already pre uh, selected, select the default prefix, OK, and then install a Windows DLL or component. OK again. And from this list, we select MFC42. That's all. We click OK. It will install this in the background. We get one more notification about the 64-bit wine prefix, which is OK. But now it is already done and we can close Proton Tricks. We have to exit out twice here. We go back to the gaming mode. And from the gaming mode now, we can just play the game. We will open the launcher once more. And we click start now. With the game working. The first startup will take a little bit for shader compilation, I guess. But uh, you can see the game does work and start now. We will have a look at performance in a bit. First, I want to show you the easier way if you don't want to fiddle around with this manually. A little bit of tinkering is still needed. So what I do here now to show you that is I will clear the Proton files. I nevertheless have to go to the desktop once more. And we are going to install Proton Glorious Egg Roll. And if you haven't installed Proton Up QT yet, you open the Discover Software Center again. And in the search bar, you enter 
scroll turn up. I have installed this already. Otherwise, you will have here again, instead of the remove button, an install button. Once this is installed, you can go to either utilities, here we have Proton UpQt, or to games, here is Proton UpQt, just has two entries. And here we install GE Proton 7 27. The fix for Rebel Galaxy Outlaw should have been included in Proton 7 26. There was a pull request adding the support for Rebel Galaxy Outlaw for the Proton fixes that are included into the Glorious Echo version of Proton. Unfortunately, it didn't make it into the version 26, but it is in 27. So from here, if you haven't this listed yet, you click on Add Version and select Proton, GE Proton 7-27, install, and it will be installed. It will take a while for the download. I've done this already. Once this is installed, we can go back to the gaming mode. And here we select Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, go to the settings sign, properties, compatibility, force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool, and we will select GE Proton 7-27. Just to be sure, I will make sure that the Proton files are removed. So this is like a clean install. I haven't altered any of the files, just the Proton prefix before with installing manually the MFC42 DLL. But this is not the case anymore. So if I hit play now, it will use the Glorious Echo Proton fork and apply that Proton fix automatically for you. Once more, the launcher is shown. And I will start this again directly to show you that it's working out of the box now. But we will have to look at the performance. So I will wait until the first shader initialization has been done. So and if we have now here a look at the performance, we see that the game is struggling a lot. We are at uh, 26 FPS, which isn't much, but there's a very easy fix. So we exit out of the game again. Start it once more with the launcher. And the only thing that we need to disable is HBAO. Disable this and the performance will be great. You don't have to change any other setting. It can all be as it is. So I have restarted the encoding, I have restarted the game, but this time without the launcher, as otherwise the game will be a little bit zoomed in on the display, which is not showing on the Steam Deck. But yeah, with that HBAO off, you see this game is now at 60 FPS, and this will stay, so far I've seen it, throughout the game. To have a look a little bit at gameplay, we are jumping into the flight training. I have altered my steering a little bit already but we'll come to that in a bit welcome to flight training module one brought to you by red star beer reach for the star red star as a new pilot it's important that you get comfortable with the controls of your spacecraft use your preferred input device to change your heading also note that there are many control customization options available to you. If you prefer an inverted up axis, make sure to check it in your PDA's options menu, along with any other control tuning options that ensure your comfort. Yeah, and that's what I did on the previous recording. In the settings here, I have changed pitch axis flip to yes. It was set to no. You do change that with the D-pad. Because in first person mode, I like to have it in, in that direction. In third person mode, it's the opposite, though. And you can switch Once you've this. you comfortable with orientation, make sure you know how to control your throttle. Tapping your throttle up and throttle down controls repeatedly will adjust your throttle in 25% increments. If you have a throttle axis, then you'll have more granular control. With the D-pad down... Of course, sometimes you'll need to move faster. Engage your afterburners for a burst of speed. This consumes power from your onboard power plant. 
Yeah, with the D-pad down, you, you can, can switch into third person mode. To orient yourself independent of your heading. Hold the throttle down control to disengage dampening and give it a try. With straining sideways, this looks Navigation cool in third person mode. Navigation can be completed with your onboard autopilot. I've added a new mission waypoint. Check your radar. The yellow diamond marks the waypoint. Orient yourself so that the yellow diamond is in the center of the radar, and you'll see that it swings into view. Once it's in view, you'll notice you have a context control in the top right of your heads-up display. Hold the context control to engage autopilot. Let's hold A. Destination reached. Ah, here we are. Excellent. Let's go over some of the targeting features of your craft. A small drone is in the vicinity. It should be visible on your radar as a blue dot. However, we can also identify mission important targets with the scanner. Press the command menu button and a radial command menu should appear. Blinking there on the left is the scanner control. Select it from the radial menu. You should now see a blue icon at the location of the drone. You can perform a scan at any time, which is useful for identifying mission important targets or ships that you can't easily see. You can lock the drone as a target. When it is visible as a highlighted object on your screen, tap the lock target button to lock it. Tapping again will unlock it as a target. When locked, you will be able to track the object no matter where it is. This brings us to an important feature of your craft, the auto pursuit function. With the object targeted, it doesn't have to be locked, but that helps. Hold the auto pursuit control. This is holding the left trigger. Notice that you will automatically orient toward your target and approach it. You can, however, still control your heading with your primary input. Also note that you can use your afterburners to approach more quickly. I'm going to activate the drone now. It's time for a little weapons test. Using auto pursuit and your primary weapons control, destroy the drone. As you pursue it, take note of the white cross that appears in front of the target. This is your weapon's lead reticle and the location you should aim at to land a shot. If the cross does not appear, then you are out of weapon's range. Excellent. The craft is destroyed. I think that's the last of them. Let's complicate things a bit. Three drones are now entering the area. Their weapons are disabled. Hostile craft inbound. Let's use your craft's targeting mode to select a target. Open your command menu and select targeting mode from the top of the radio menu. This paused mode allows you to select targets at your leisure and to take stock of the battlefield. What have we got here? Destroy all of the drones. Excellent work. Shit. Let's up the stakes. Three more drones are approaching. Their weapons are live. Hostile craft entering the area. Try using your second. 
secondary weapon to destroy them when you have missile lock. Make sure to wait until the lock reticle has completed and a lock tone has sounded. Excellent work again. Looks like we're in the clear. This concludes flight training module one. Red Star Deer reminds you to fly safe out there. This also concludes the demo of Rebel Galaxy Outlaw on deck, how you get it to run, though it is marked as unsupported. Maybe the loud shooting is also causing an unsupported rating. But uh, as it doesn't start at all before, uh, I think and the launcher uh, blocking the steam input, that's the real reason. Nevertheless, this is how it works. It is playable at least. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.